2.5. All right, 2.5, distance from a point to a line. Uh, this is another application of what you've already done, but we're going to run through a little bit of an investigation first. So please read along with the story uh, with me. We've got Alberta is Canada's main oil producing province, but there are significant oil fields elsewhere in Canada. One of the latest to be uh, found is Hibernia, which is under the Atlantic Ocean on the Grand Banks. The Hibernia drilling platform is located 315 kilometers east-southeast of St. John, Newfoundland. Oil is transported to shore from an offshore oil platform by oil tankers. The platform must also receive regular visits from supply ships that come from different places along the coast. Finding the shortest distance between the coast and the platform is very important to reduce costs. Here's our investigation. We have a radar operator on an oil platform. He's monitoring the positions and courses of ships on a radar screen. In the diagram, the innermost ring represents a distance of five kilometers from the platform. So every ring, each successive ring is five kilometers out. Does that make sense? Okay, so you got five, 10, 15, 20 kilometers is the final ring there. Um, what is the scale of the diagram? So go ahead and use your ruler to figure out the distance from each ring, the space in between each ring. Anyone have a ruler going? Yeah? See that? So my fourth ring is at four centimeters. One, two, three. So each ring is one centimeter. So on our map, we have one centimeter. But what does that equal in real life? Five kilometers. So our scale is every one centimeter on our diagram scales up to five kilometers in real life. Okay. Next section, section number two. Use the diagram to estimate the closest distance in kilometers that each of the following ships will come to the platform. So we're going to get a direction for each of the ships. We're going to draw a straight line and we're going to see how close they come to the platform. So first we have ship A on a course of 180 degrees. Now we have a, uh, what's that called, a compass. We've got a compass up there or a compass rose and it uh, is telling us that 180 degrees is due south. So ship A is heading due south and this is just an estimate. So you're just drawing the best you can, straight line south for ship A, start at ship A, straight down, <clears throat> and then estimating what is the closest that that ship will come. What do you think? Not very close. Um, 15 kilometers. Yeah, it's about 15 kilometers. So I would do a little squiggly for about or approximately, or this is my best guess. It's about 15 kilometers is the closest it will come. It's further than 15 now. And it will be further than 15 if it keeps going. But the closest it will come is about 15. All right, ship B on a course of 270. Go ahead and draw it. 270 degrees is due uh, west. And what's the closest approximately it will come? 15 kilometers. Think so? Oh, five, ten. Ten, 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 ten. Well, like nine. Third, third chance is a charm, eh? Yeah. Approximately ten. Okay, ship C. <laughs> ship C is traveling at an angle of 120 degrees. 120 is right over here-ish. It's kind of uh, traveling on a slopey slope down. So we're going to try to copy that line down with C. What uh, what would we say is the approximately the closest it'll come? Seven. Five. Five. Yeah, I'm going with five. 
It's approximate. <clears throat> okay. We're going to take in section three, we're going to take one of the ships from part two, and we're going to determine where it is closest to the platform. Okay. So which ship would you guys like to deal with? C. Deal with ship C? Sure. Where on ship C's route is it closest to the platform? Uh, yeah, pretty much right there. That's its closest point to point P. Okay. Well, let's draw that little line segment. And what can you tell me about the relationship between the route that ship C takes and the line site? Yeah, they're perpendicular, okay? Go ahead and finish that diagram for ship B. For ship B. So pick the place where ship B is the closest to point P. Draw a straight line from P to that new point. And then think about how those lines interact with each other. They meet at a right angle. <clears throat> what about ship A? Go ahead and find where ship A is closest. Draw a straight line. How do those lines interact? It's a right angle. Let's, let's assume ship E was going to go straight south. Where would it be closest? Another right angle. What if ship E went west? Where would it be closest? Oh, on the right angle. What if ship E went at a diagonal way up here? Where would it end up being closest to point P? At the right angle. At wherever this line meets the new line at a right angle, okay? What's that? Like if it went down this way? Okay, yeah. either way, it doesn't matter how you do it or which direction it goes. The new line segment, that will be the shortest distance between point P and the line made by ship E, will always meet at a right angle. Okay? If north, if it went straight north, you would have to assume that lines go forever. So you'd also imaginarily draw that line straight south, in which case it would meet over here. Okay? Lines don't stop. So at the bottom, where it asks you to kind of summarize what you just found out, it says at what angle does the new line segment meet the line that represents the course of the ship? So basically, the ship is driving this way, and this is our new line segment. How do they meet? Right angle. Okay. Or you could say uh, 90 degrees. How else would you say it? The, the, line, the line segments are perpendicular. Per pin, per pen? I think it's per pen. Dicular. All right. All right, two examples on the next uh, pages to confirm some of the things that we just talked about and to determine the shortest distance from a point to a line. So we've got example one here. Uh, determine the shortest distance from the origin. From origin, where's that? Uh, where's the origin on the Cartesian grid? Zero, zero, right in the, right in the middle, okay? Zero, zero. Uh, and we're going from the origin to the line y equals 2x minus 10. Okay, so you've got a little drawing off to the right. The line y equals 2x minus 10 is already drawn for you. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It's got a y-intercept of negative 10. It's got an x-intercept of 5. And I'll label and name it y equals 2x minus 10. And now we're good to go. So what can I say about the line that goes from the origin to this line and is the shortest line possible? Hadassah. It'll have a y-intercept of 0, 
zero. Okay, so I know it has a y-intercept of zero. So if I'm thinking about y equals mx plus b, I already know that this is zero. Um, it's the line should only be perpendicular, so then the slope is going to be the opposite. Nice. Since this new line segment, and I'm going to draw it. Mine's not going to be exact. It's just an estimate. But I know for sure that this is going to be a right angle. Okay? My drawing's not perfect, but it's pretty close. That's going to be a right angle. So what does that tell me about the slope? It's going to be uh, M2 is going to equal the opposite reciprocal of M1. Okay? Now, the problem asks me to find the distance. The distance. So what do I need to find out in order to find the distance? distance so to use my distance formula, I need two points. Do I have two points? Uh, yeah. No, you have one point. I have one. I know this one is zero, zero. Yeah. I do not know this one. It's okay, so one. how do I find that one? This one for now? Mm, it's not going to be the midpoint. Sorry, can you say that again? Okay, so it sounds like I need an equation for that line, right? Because in order to find this point, what is this? What is this? What's happening at this point? There is an. This is a point of intersection. It's a point of intersection between my new line and my existing line. Okay, so I need to find find POI. In order to find the POI, what do I need? Reaching reaching back to unit one. Two, two equations. Okay, I need two equations two equations. I need two lines, right? A system of linear equations. I have one of those, the blue line they already gave us. So I'm going to need to develop an equation for this line, okay? I'm going to know the slope already. I know the slope because it's the opposite reciprocal of this slope. And I have a point that it goes through, so that's pretty helpful. And actually, I can just use the y-intercept uh, of zero. That makes it really easy. I don't even have to use my point-slope form in that one. Uh, or a point, uh, point slope formula. And I think that's it, right? We're going to get two equations. In order to do two equations, I need slope of line two. This new line is going to be called line two. And I think that's all our steps. So let's do that. Right off the bat, if I need the slope of line two, you guys already told me it's going to be perpendicular. The lines are perpendicular, so the slope of line two is going to be the opposite reciprocal of line one. Here's line one. Okay, so what is my new slope? Negative one over two. Negative one half. Good job. So I'm going to list both of my slopes here just so I can keep track of my work and show my teacher that I know what I'm talking about. The first slope of the first line is two. It's given right here. And that means the slope of my second line is negative one half, okay? If you know how to do that, you don't need to show me all this work. You just need to write the new slope and you better make sure you get it right. It's gonna have an opposite sign and the fraction's gonna be flipped, okay? Well, now that I know that, I've got the slope. Now I need two equations. I already have one of them. So let's work on equation two, my second line here, this little black line segment. I'm gonna call him equation two. And I can do this a couple different ways. I can use this formula. Don't write this because I'm not going to do this. I could use this. I could put in negative one half here, and then I could put in zero here and zero here because it goes through zero, zero. And then I could simplify it, expand and simplify. What I would end up with is y minus zero is y. Okay. And by the way, I'm just going to go right into y equals mx plus b because I know m is negative one half, negative one half. So I have y equals negative one half x. And I know the x coordinate of the point that it goes through is zero. So this would just be end up being plus zero or minus zero, which I don't need to have. So this is done. This is the equation of that line. Okay. It goes through the origin. It's really easy. The y-intercept is zero and it has a slope of negative one half. 
down one over two, down one over two, down one over two, okay? Well, now I have two equations. Here's, why don't I copy down equation one? 2x minus 10. Uh, how would you like to solve this? Substitution. Substitution. Okay, so because I have y equals this and I have y equals that, substitution is really easy. I just take what y equals from one equation, negative 1 half x, and I set it equal to what uh, y is from the other equation because I know that this x and this y, this x and this x, sorry, are going to be the exact same value, and this y and this y are going to be the exact same value at this point, and only at that point. That's the principle we learned in unit one. A couple different ways to do this. Um, you could add half an x to both sides, or subtract two x from both sides. What step do we maybe want to do first so that we don't have to deal with any fractions? Uh, multiply by two. Yeah, what am I going to multiply by two? Uh, the whole thing. What do you mean by the whole like thing? All the terms. Every term multiplied by 2. Okay, I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to do it. So my next step is negative x is equal to 4x minus 20. Okay, I've multiplied every term by 2, so I'm good to continue on. Let's simplify. I am going to subtract 4x's from both sides. So I have negative 1x here, and I'm going to subtract 4 more x's. I'm going to have negative 5x equals 20, negative 20. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, so I'm going to have x equals 4. I'm going to box that partial answer. Now what? Insert it into first or second equation. Good. I can take either one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take equation 2 because it looks easier. So I've got y equals negative one-half times x, but I know that at the point of intersection, x is 4. See how this is a good review of unit 1 and 2 getting put together here? That tells me that what's half of 4? 2, and it's going to be negative, so I've got y equals negative 2. All right, so that part is done. I've got the point of intersection. The point of intersection... I'm going to write a little note for myself. Therefore, the point of intersection is 4, negative 2. And I might even just add that to my diagram. And now I'm at my last step. I might double check to see what it's asking me to do. I need the shortest distance. So what am I using? Uh, distance formula. So now I get to find the length of this little line segment. Okay. I could name these points. I could call this point A, and I could call this point O. By the way, the, uh, not zero, O. Um, the origin, origin, O, starts with an O, zero, zero, O. It's a good, good letter to use for that. And we've got our distance formula. It's the first time I'm using it today, so I'm going to copy it down. It's x2 minus x1 in a group. I'm going to square that. And I'm going to add y2 minus y1, which will be squared. This is just an extension of Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But we've taken the square root of both sides ahead of time. And I plug in what I know. Uh, it's going to be easier to put the values for the origin second. So I'm going to do in this bracket 4 minus 0. And in my second bracket, my y coordinates are going to be negative 2 minus 0. Make sure those are both squared, that I've copied that down. Uh, this is a step you're still making mistakes on, okay, folks? A couple things to keep in mind, and this is going to come back on your communications questions for the unit. In this group is 4 take away 0, that's just 4. Squaring something means Multiplying it by multiply it by itself. Is this the same as 4 times 2? No, it's 4 times 4, okay? It's by itself. So this one is 16. And now over here I have negative 2 minus 0. 4. So I've got negative 2 squared. That's negative 2 times itself. Negative times a negative is a positive. And I end up with positive 4 here. Listen, you will only ever get positive numbers here. How do you know that? Whether you get a negative number, you're... 
positive yep. So great. So over here we ended up with a positive value squared is positive. Here we ended up with a negative value squared is positive. A squared value will always be positive. Always, 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 always. Okay. All right. Um. By the way, there is a. Uh, never mind. Won't go. Won't go into that. Okay, so this is, and the problem says in A, we need it as an exact solution. What does that mean? 20, negative is that's, that's it. I'm done. This is exact, okay? Radical 20, the square root of 20. That's the answer, all done, okay? That's the answer to A. B says, give it as an approximate answer to the nearest tenth. What would you do? Square. Put this in your calculator. Second function, square root 20, enter. And then you have approximately 4.5? It's 4.47 or something like that, right? 4.47? Okay. So to one decimal place or to the nearest tenth, it's 4.5. And we're just talking about units. There's no specific real world measurement here, like kilometers or meters. So this is done. Okay. Again, we did the same thing as we've been doing in other word problems or other multi step problems. We're thinking through, what are we trying to find out? Distance, okay, for distance we need two points. Do I have two points? No. How do I create a point? Please don't forget this. The only way to find this point right here is to find the point of intersection between the two lines. That's the only way. In order to do that, we needed two equations. In order to get my second equation, we needed to use the slope from equation one and the understanding that the shortest distance is going to meet at a right angle. So I have uh, opposite uh, reciprocal slope, plug that into another equation and then use my substitution elimination to find the point of intersection and then use that point of intersection to find the distance. All right, example two. Example two is going to be a bit the same, but this time you're not going from the origin. So it's a, just a slightly more complicated. We're gonna find the distance from point P, which is at negative one, three. We're gonna go to the line X plus Y minus five equals zero. Well, you have a little uh, picture there to help you out already. If you're at a practice problem and they didn't draw a picture for you, what should you do? Draw one, yay. Okay, there's my line. It's got a, s I already know what the slope is, but uh, we'll get there as we move along. It has an x-intercept of five and a y-intercept of five. And I'm gonna name my line. This is the line x plus y minus five equals zero. What else about this problem is a little bit trickier than the other one? It's not yeah, my line isn't given in, in slope intercept form, so I don't have the slope immediately. That's okay. Point P is at negative one, positive three. That's somewhere over here. Okay, point P, negative one, positive three. And I'm finding the shortest distance to the line that's given. I'm gonna draw that on my graph, even though I don't really know what it looks like. It's just going to help me visualize it, and I know that it's going to meet at a right angle. I'm going to need that information. Okay, here we go. List our steps. What are we trying to do? Find two points. Okay, so yeah, and I'm going to add just last example. I didn't do this, but we're going to add the idea that we need to actually find the distance. And then in order to do that, we need two points. How do I get? I, get, I have P, but I don't have this point. We're going to call it point Q. How do I find what is point Q? Uh, you need to find the point of intersection. Find P O I. I'm going to call that Q. How do I do that? What do I need in order to do that? You need two equations. Need two equations. I already have one. How do I get my second one? Find the slope of line two. Find slope for L2. And I'm just going to make myself a little note right away that that's going to be perpendicular to L1. Okay, L2 is perpendicular to L1. That's going to help me know what to do with my slope. 
Well, do I have the slope of this given line? Yes. Do you? What yeah. is it? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to rearrange. I'm going to add another step. Rearrange L1 to y equals mx plus b. Because they give you the picture, you can clearly see that the slope is negative 1. Okay, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 5 over 5. So the slope is negative 1. That's just going to help us double check it. First, I'm going to take equation 1 here, which is x plus y minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to rearrange into y equals mx plus b. So what am I going to do? I notice I have a positive y already. That's good. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Y equals negative x plus And I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Okay, I rearranged. And that's going to give me my slope for L1. What's the slope? Negative 1. Okay, I'm going to make a note. M1, that's the slope of line 1, equals negative 1. And then I'm going to make another note that I'm looking for perpendicular. So M2 then, it's a little bit tricky. What's the perpendicular slope to negative one? It's just positive one over one, okay? Change the sign, flip the fraction. Slope of my next line is positive one. Got it. Now, I need two equations. My last example, it was easy because we were going through the origin. This example is a little bit tougher. How do I get an equation for my line PQ? Um, well, we, do, we, uh, we don't have a, a, an a equation yet. We only have one linear equation. We need two linear equations. So here's what we do, folks. We know the slope of this line, and we know one point that it goes through, right? So point, slope, formula. Okay. I'm going to use the point P, and I know my slope is positive 1. That's going to make this right side pretty easy. P goes through x coordinate of negative 1 and a y coordinate of positive 3. So I just sub those things in for x1 and y1. On the right here, I'm going to have in the bracket, it's x plus 1. We can do that kind of in our head, x plus 1. So, and that's being multiplied by 1. Well, that's easy. Yes. x plus 1 times 1 is x plus 1. Okay. And over here, I've got uh, y, and I'm going to add 3 to both sides, leaving me with just y. And over here, I've got another 3. So my final uh, equation here for line 2, maybe I'll say I'm doing line 2 here, is x plus 4. Okay? And that looks about right on my grid. 1, 2, 3, 4. So double checking along the way, looks like I'm doing okay. All right, we have two equations. Now what? We use substitution or elimination. Fine, or substitution or elimination. Okay, I already know what y equals. It equals x plus 4. So I'm going to use substitution. I'm just going to put x plus 4 into equation 1 anywhere I see a y. Okay, and I'm going to go back up to my original equation 1 rather than using the one that I made. Okay, uh, doesn't really matter what you do, but maybe fewer mistakes if you use the equation that they gave you. So I've got x plus y, but now I know that y is x plus 4. And then I have minus 5 equals 0. Because this is a positive sign down here, it's not going to change anything in the brackets. It's just going to be x plus x plus 4 minus 5. So I've got two x's. And then I have a positive 4 and a negative 5. That's going to be negative 1. On the right, it still equals 0. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That gives me 2x equals 1. And now, be careful. Lots of you will say x equals 2. Doing your algebra. 
x does not equal 2, x equals 1 divided by 2, x equals 1 half here, okay? So that's part of my answer. I'm going to take that up here just because I'm out of space. In order to find my value for y, I'm going to sub it into equation 2 here. And I've got y equals x plus 4, so I have 1 half plus 4. So y equals four and a half. So I could use 4.5. I could switch to decimals and go x equals 0 0.5, y equals 4.5. Uh, or I could call this, <clears throat> I could call this eight over two and add eight halves plus one half is nine halves. Or call it 4.5. Make a little note for myself that I just found the point of intersection. It's at 0 0.5. 4.5. If I want to, I could go ahead and add that to my diagram. 0 0.5, 4.5, that's point Q. Now that I have two points, I'm on my final step. Use my distance formula to find the distance between P and Q. I'm going to name this line segment PQ. There's my distance formula. Okay, I'm going to copy it out for us one more time. So we've got the difference in our x's squared plus the square of the difference in our y coordinates. Plug in the values that I know. Again, it doesn't matter which one I do first. I'm going to go from p to q. So I've got negative 1 plus 0 0.5. Oh, negative 1 minus 0 0.5. Right? Squared. Then in my next bracket, I've got 3 minus 4.5 squared. This is where you'd bring out your calculator, okay? Uh, I can do it in my head, but you probably want your calculator. Inside this group, you end up with negative 1.5, okay? I know that, so we're gonna end up with 1.5 squared. I know that 15 squared is 225. If 15 squared is 225, then 1.5 squared is 2.25. Okay, you would use your calculator. Then I have plus, this one is 3 minus 4.5. That's also negative 1.5. So it's also going to be positive 2.25. <clears throat> okay, so I add those guys up. I get an exact value of the square root of 4.5, that's not what it asks me to do. I need it to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to go ahead on my calculator, go second function, square root, second function, square root, 4.5, gives me 2.1 units. So this little red line segment from P to Q is 2.1 units. The new line, the shortest distance to hit that blue line, it's going to hit at point Q at 0 0.5, 4.5, and a distance of this. Yeah? Again, a lot of review in there, a lot of uh, applying some of the knowledge that you've used. One thing that right at the first example you guys got tricked on, somebody said, we need to find the midpoint. No, there's no midpoint in this. We don't care where the middle is anymore. We care where the slopes are opposite reciprocals. We want perpendicular lines. And as we move through into different geometric shapes or properties of triangles, such as the altitude or a right bisector or a median, you have to remember which property you're looking for, which formulas you're using, and yeah, be careful as you're working through. All right, your practice problems come from page 103, numbers 1 through 7, A, C, E, G, dot, 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 okay? Every other one. Enjoy.